seem to be psychologically preparing, setting us up for some ultimate delusion that is too horrible even to imagine as yet. I would agree with that. Dr. I.D. Thomas is one of a long line of Welsh preachers. He is currently the senior pastor at the First Baptist Church of Maywood, California, and has authored several books which have enjoyed wide circulation. In his book, The Omega Conspiracy, Dr. Thomas explains the phenomenon of unidentified flying objects and offers an explanation that could identify the beings who operate them. As incredible as his explanation may sound, let us regard the ancient saying of Heraclitus, who 500 years before Christ said, Because it is sometimes so unbelievable, the truth escapes becoming known. The answer to all this and the clue to this cosmic riddle may be found in the ancient book of Genesis. And back there in chapter 6, we are told of a very amazing and bizarre event. The sons of God saw the daughters of men and saw that they were beautiful and they lusted after them. And then we read they married them and sired children from them. For the past 1500 years, most scholars, including evangelical scholars, have interpreted the sons of God as the good sons of Seth and the daughters of men as the wicked daughters of Cain. They've adopted that interpretation because the other one is so bizarre and outlandish. The ancient interpretation, and in my opinion the correct one, is that the sons of God were demonic beings or fallen angels, and that they came down to earth, they lusted after the daughters of men, they married them, and produced this amazing progeny, this hybrid progeny of the Nephilim. And the very word Nephilim does not mean giants. It comes from the root Nephal, fallen ones. The early Christian fathers in the first four centuries, men like Irenaeus, Tertullian, Ambrose, for 400 years they knew no other interpretation except that the sons of God were angelic beings. Uh, Josephus, the cosmopolitan Jewish historian, says the same thing. We read in the book of Job that when God laid the foundation of the earth, the sons of God shouted for joy. Obviously the sons of God could not be human beings. Adam had not been created. If this was a case of just mixed marriages between good men and wicked women, it is surprising that God should have issued the fire of judgment that he did. God took this stern action of wiping out the human race. Now the only family that were left intact in order to re-establish, repopulate the new world was the family of Noah. Noah, we are told, was perfect in his generations. The word perfect does not mean, in this case, morally perfect. Because we know from the story of Noah, and especially what happened after the flood, that Noah was not perfect. Uh, what it means is like a lamb uh, for the paschal sacrifice, that lamb had to be without blemish, uh, physically pure, without blemish. So it seems was the case of Noah, the only family that remained uncontaminated from these strange beings that appeared from space, uh, the only line that was pure and clean from God's standpoint to start a new world and a new civilization. Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, so in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Of all the patriarchs and prophets of the Old Testament, the key to prophecy above all others is Noah. And something happened in the days of Noah that was a distinctive, characteristic of Noah's time that didn't happen before or after. Wars and famines and pestilences and, and natural disasters have always happened. But something happened in the days of Noah. And the most sinister and bizarre of all the things that happened was this intermarriage between the angelic race and the human race. 
And of course, the mastermind behind it all was another angel, a fallen angel, Lucifer. Now, we believe that as they came in those days, we may very well be on the edge of another invasion from outer space, that Satan will once again make another attempt, maybe the final assault on the human race, in order to wean men and women away from the worship of God. He has tried before, he will inevitably try again. And by seducing the human race, by sending these so-called entities from space, demonic beings, he will try to get people all over the world to worship him and to deprive God of the worship that is due to him. Fortunately, we know what the end result is going to be. But this final or omega assault that will come at the end of time may trigger the coming back of Jesus Christ to rescue his own. Satan has failed before, and the Bible predicts he will fail again. We are told quite emphatically in God's word that the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Satan will make the attempt, but our God greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Y eso es lo que yo creo. <laughs>